Hey guys, this is Doug. We're out at the uh, community care event, um, August the 8th. We're about set up. We're getting ready to hey, we're park again. And uh, today, this is our wonderful cook, our wonderful chef. We give away free hot dogs and free brats. Come and get them. <laughs> cook medium rare or however you like it, sure. Medium rare. <laughs> and of course, we got some wonderful servers up here. There's Courtney up here. We really got to watch her sometimes because she sneaks extra things on the hot dogs. Whatever. <laughs> Don't even put it that way. I'll do that to yours, maybe. Just kidding. Then we have Doug here who runs the show. Whatever. You know, the movie star and the boss. And as you can see, we got a bunch of food today. And all these wonderful people. Okay. As you can see, this is our traffic director today. <laughs> oh God, he's not, he's not a, a Kevin. You know what? If y'all don't get rid of Kevin, I'm telling you. He's got the camera. No, no, he got. He did that thing. I'm listening. Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Have a good day. Now be nice and go away with your little toy, okay? Got no, I'm having fun. <laughs> don't go away. I will make you disappear. Remember, we have to ride together. And I got my posse in here. Come here, Laura's doing. I'm going to talk to Kevin all the time. Hi, sweetie. Oh, he's like, I'm camera shy. How are you today? Are you being good? You being good for mommy? Huh? Always. Do you know what my name is? I don't know what my name is. We got something going. I haven't figured out my name yet. Can you help me? Can mommy get you a hot dog yet? No. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic, how are you? What's your name? My name's Laura. Laura? What do you think of God's work today, is giving out this food? It helps Liberty a lot, doesn't it? It does. Lots of great people here help. Well, I hope you have a blessed day, and God bless you, and enjoy this little event that we put on. Thank you. Yeah, this is Sharon. She's one of our volunteers. She also lives in the house with Doug, and uh, she's giving out colorful spaghetti today. So, how you doing, Sharon? You enjoying your day? Even though it's hot and it's sweaty and it's water behind us. <laughs> Thank you. As you can see, here's Doug again, roaming the crowd. We come here to serve God. Hey guys, this is Doug, Fellowship of the Martyrs.com, Liberty Disaster Relief.com, Church of Liberty.com. All just websites, not member of anything, not asking anybody to be a member of anything except a member of the body of Christ. And if you're written in the book of life, then you're one of his, and you're my brother, you're my sister, that's all there is to it. Um, I'm sitting, it's Sunday the 9th. We finished our uh, uh, community care event yesterday. I haven't totaled up the numbers yet, but probably around 700 people. It was not as big as the one before, but we weren't. We knew that it wouldn't be. We knew that we didn't have as much food as we had had previously, so we're. Uh, it went just right. I mean, it was the exact amount of stuff, uh, and God's been taking care of us. 
some real breakthroughs that I believe are coming shortly. Uh, I'll, I'll be excited to tell you about as the Lord begins to to open up some more doors for us here. I'm out at Smithville Lake right now. Um, it's a day of rest. Um, uh, you can watch my video about the Sabbath. Is is the Sabbath on Saturday or Sunday? Well, it's whenever the Lord tells you to rest. And so, all day today, the internet connection was not working. Hold on just a minute. Sorry, William. I'll talk to you later. Ah. Uh, the internet connection was down today. Couldn't really get any work done on that. I'm trying to get the video processed about um, a day with Doug the day before the event. We'll get that loaded up pretty soon and finally stop crashing my computer. Anyway, we're out here at Smithville Lake. Uh, it's a great big, I don't know how big a lake. This is just a little teeny arm of it right here, but we're down here at a uh, little swimming beach. Um, I doubt you can see. There's Big James in a black shirt and uh, some of our other folks splashing around out there and uh, we're getting uh, a little bit of sunshine it's about let's see 545 and uh, we're grilling some chicken and brought some sandwiches and drinks and big pitcher or big uh, igloo thing of uh, lemonade and just gonna get out of the house and chill plus uh, they got showers here which is great everybody can get a hot shower because uh, we don't have hot water at the ministry houses right now um, haven't for a while so but everybody seems to manage most of the world has never had a hot shower their whole life so uh, you know learning to do without some things is a good thing um, last night we had either 29 or 30 people in the houses um, crammed in pretty tight but uh, it's a good day I got a nap and went out this morning and delivered bread to the various congregations and some of them really kind of starting to get it and wanting to help and um, when I was at First Baptist the pastor there got a note from uh, that the pastor from Desperation Church has stopped by and wanted to meet with them and see how they maybe they could work together and Desperation Church is canceling one of their services a month and taking everybody out into the community to do something or participate some help with some other congregation or whatever and uh, Desperation Church is too big to fit in the sanctuary at First Baptist there's too many people but um, it'll be interesting to see how that kind of catches on so um, I don't know how much the wind noise is bothering things, so I'm going to stop here and uh, leave it at that. And if it sounds okay, maybe we'll do some more stuff. Thanks. Bye. Okay, what do you think? Huh? Is that some good looking chicken? We got more in there. We got all kinds of stuff. You're welcome to come to Liberty and get some barbecue. That's what we do here in Kansas City. I'm going to sit in the truck so the wind noise doesn't bother the camera anymore and talk to you guys some more. How y'all doing? Yeah, that was Daniel. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> I don't know if you can see. They're throwing grapes to Charles. He's way down there. They're throwing him grapes to see if he can catch them in his mouth. Anyway, there's Big James. The guy called me the other day. He said, I don't understand why all these people are saying all this stuff about you. He said, I understand that you're going to have persecution when you're like Jesus. And, and uh, but they're saying you're a cult leader. And a cult is just an extreme denomination. It's that same spirit of denominationalism 
driven farther and farther to the extreme. And and he said and he said you're the farthest thing from that. All you've been doing is preaching against it and preaching that we need to be one. And I'm like, I know. Had a guy that um, used used to be a used to be a pastor, used to be a children's pastor, that uh, called to encourage me. He left me a phone message and said, uh, you know, I want to talk to you about some of the stuff you're saying because I've seen some videos and whatever. And the first message was kind of like he wanted to rebuke me and straighten me out and get me uh, whatever, like like he had a dog in the fight somehow. I don't I don't understand, but. Um, a lot of second, third, fourth hand people feel like it's their responsibility to rebuke me for the hearsay that they heard on YouTube without ever asking me my side of the story at all. Anyway, he left me a phone message. I didn't get my messages for two or three days. And then he, so I'm listening to my messages. He leaves me a phone message. And then a couple messages later, leaves me another phone message, message saying, uh, you know, I took a deeper look at this stuff and it's mean and nasty and. When I pulled out of the church, they did the same thing to me. So never mind. Don't you don't you don't need to call me. God bless you. Keep doing what you're doing. It's okay. That's the Lord, and that's why I don't fight back and make a big fuss about trying to crucify some of the folks that are just not at all acting like Jesus in the way that they're trying to handle me or correct me or or talk about me to others or whatever. For one thing, I've already seen multiple occasions where people that came, came to all kinds of conclusions, judged, came looking to judge, whatever, leave wigged out, say things, and then the Lord breaks them, they repent, they have to take it all back, they have to send out emails and tell everybody they're sorry and that Doug was right all along and whatever, and humble themselves at no pressure from me. God just straightens them out. And uh, at that point, I want them to be useful for something. I don't want them to be a lame duck like Jim Baker or Mike Warnke or a bunch of folks that just got crucified in, in such a way that it's really, really hard for them when they do repent to be given another chance. So, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to add to that. The Lord is going to take care of it. So I just kind of let him say whatever. It burns itself out eventually because none of it's really based on true facts. And then the Lord will have His way, and some will will turn and repent, and some won't. But that's not my problem. I've learned that there's no talking to somebody that's under a red dragon. There's just no talking to somebody that is under a delusion and cannot see and you end up at an impasse where they think you're under a delusion you think they're under a delusion you can't convince them they can't convince you so there's no point in talking at that point the safest thing for everybody is to just trust that somehow it's part of the plan the Lord knows what he's doing and he'll straighten it out in his time because there's no convincing somebody out from under a red dragon there's no straightening them out about the delusion that they're under until the Lord pours out repentance and the Lord wakes wakes them up there's no hope so there's no point this and and, and it, it's not I'm not just talking about theological things it could be evolution and creationism or whatever if if if, if it is your God if your argument if your anti Doug sentiment if your obsession with crucifying fellowship of the martyrs and and whatever is guiding your life, organizing your days, everything is based around that, well then it's your God and there's no talking you out of it. You've sold yourself to it and, and that's just the way it is. And, and until the Lord straightens you out and humbles you and pours out repentance on you, there's no, there's, no, there's no making any sense of it with you. There's no talking to you about it. So I just have learned the hard way from trying to talk to pastors and it doing absolutely no good whatsoever um, that it's just better to just leave them alone and let the Lord sort it out when he's good and ready. I'm just watching here because one of the little kids is getting real close to the water. Um, I don't feel like it's my obligation to defend myself. 
but I do feel like I'm going out front, going through some things that other people are going to be going through pretty soon. And I, and I even hear from people, you know, you've been doing this four or five years and we're just now hearing this in our city and we want to come and we want to help and we want to see what you're doing and we want to take it back to our town and praise God, absolutely. And, and then I can say, okay, you're going to be hated, you're going to be persecuted, they're going to come after you, they're going to say all kinds of vile, vicious things against you, your own family's going to try to kill you because Jesus said it would be that way and I can testify that in my life that's absolutely a fact and you need to be ready for it. And I can tell you that there's joy and peace and reward like you never saw for, for, for suffering. The house church in China, you practically can't be a pastor unless you've already been in prison for a couple of years for sharing your faith or holding underground meetings. They just don't respect you if you've never been arrested, you know? And that's an overgeneralization, but it's, it's the persecution, it's the suffering that refines us. And praise God, I've done a lot of it. And we've learned to trust God for everything, trust Him. Somehow the bills, I, I don't even know how He does it. I don't even know how He does it. But He always does and He's always faithful. And, and I can testify to the truth of George Mueller's experience and, and so many others um, that just live on faith and trust God for everything and, and He's faithful to provide. And He's faithful to defend. And. Uh, the Sabbath reading yesterday was um, Isaiah 49 to 51 and talks a lot about what he's going to do to the enemies of Zion and, and how he's going to defend them and restore them and all kinds of stuff. And, and I believe that the remnant in, in the United States um, is going to rise up and it's going to be glorious and I believe it's coming soon. Anyway, if you want some barbecue, if you want to come out to the lake, if you want to suffer, be hated by your family, uh, hated by the world and the law and the systems of man, come to liberty. If you want to listen to gossip and hearsay and you're too weak to test the spirits and know what is the spirit of murder and what is the spirit of God, stay where you are or whatever, but don't come to liberty because you'll get munched up here. This is the front lines. This is a real battle. And there are temptations. There's people misbehaving. There's, there's all kinds of reasons all kinds of ways Satan will get you all munched up and twisted into a pretzel so if you're here to come come put all your trust in God no matter how strong you think you are if he's saying come then come and we'll do the best we can to build you up and make you strong and impart whatever we got to you that you need and and uh, wait on the Lord and it ain't about following me and it ain't about you know conforming to whatever we got people here so different so vastly different and yet they love each other. And that's, a, that's the miracle. That's what impresses the world. That we don't feel an obligation to force them to conform to our image. That we don't feel an obligation to tell them what to do or make rules. Just simply that we love them. And uh, throw our arms open and take them. And uh, for a lot of folks it's too good to be true. Because it's Jesus. And he is too good to be true. Anyway, I'm going to go uh, get some of the chicken before it's all gone. And uh, thanks for listening, as always. Um, I prayed for a long time for the kids to come. And, you know, we got a, we got a bunch of young people here and, and uh, more on the way that just are hungry for God. IHOP, other things aren't doing it. Their Baptist youth group isn't doing it. They don't know how to get closer to God. They don't know how to get their cup really full and keep it full and walk in holiness. Um, and they're coming to see what God's doing here. And, and uh, you're all welcome. We'll make a way. We'll make room for you. Thanks for listening. I love you all. More on the website, fellowshipofthemartyrs.com. Bye.